in, in many regards, China, you know, faces these diplomatic difficulties, one might put it, from all sorts of directions. And I go into these more in details in the report discussing each country as an individual case. How does China see itself in relation to the rest of the world? And how does its geographic location influence its foreign policy positions? Well, joining me to discuss this is Nicholas Babaya, who's the author of a new CRA report on China and the world. Nicholas, how does China's geostrategic position in the world uh, influence its outlook in terms of foreign policy? Well, that's a very interesting question, David, and this is a question I have attempted to answer and will be attempting to answer in the webinar. Uh, if you look at China on a map, one interesting thing that strikes out to you in comparison with a country like the United States is where with the United States, you essentially have this very large landmass in the North American continent with the Atlantic Ocean on the one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other side, Canada to its north, Mexico to its south. Geographically speaking, there are not many threats around its borders. China, on the other hand, shares a land border with 14 countries. And although it has a vast coastline, that coastline is dotted with islands all over. Uh, and in modern times, many of those countries which are right against China do not have the greatest relationships with China. Um, this could be for historical reasons, or this could be due to unresolved border disputes. Um, you know, and during the 20th century, many of these border disputes caused actual conflicts and wars. Now, in the 21st century, a lot of these wars have generally subsided and things tend to get sorted out in a more diplomatic manner. But the point is that China's geographical position in East Asia is in many regards not the most ideal in the world. And I think that when you view China's uh, actions on the international stage, both in bilateral diplomatic relations and multilateral ones, uh, and you take this context of its geostrategic uh, position, you then get a much better idea of why leaders in the PRC do what they do. And so that is what I'm attempting uh, to answer here. So Nicholas, let's delve more deeply into some of those conflicts, both historical and contemporary. I'm thinking about relations with Taiwan, the South China Sea. What about the engagements with Japan and South Korea as well, which are generally seen to be uh, hostile, but uh, not outright so. But what are some of the flashpoints that you've identified in your report? I'll briefly go through a few of them. First of all, if you look at China's Western region, we have the Tibetan Plateau. Uh, geographically, this is the highest altitude region of the world, just north of the Himalaya mountain range. Quite dry, but also uh, home to the sources of many of China's major rivers and its water sources in the more fertile and higher rainfall uh, southeastern region of the country. And right in this region, China has a border with India and almost the entire border has a very large border dispute. The two countries are disputing where exactly that border is. And this has led to flash ups in recent times. Then if you go over to China's maritime coast, and if you begin at the north, you see countries like South Korea, Japan, both of which are uh, friendly allies of the United States and NATO and contained US military bases. Now, if you consider the fact that many of China's own military bases are also con are up around its northwestern coast, uh, or northeastern coast rather, uh, you know, this, this has the real potential for being a national security threat. As you go further down, you have islands like Taiwan and the Philippines. These are both very close allies of the United States as well. And geographically speaking, they're located really, really close to the Chinese mainland. Even if you go into Southeast Asia, even countries like Vietnam, which is also a socialist one-party state, uh, ideologically in many ways quite similar to China, even Vietnam doesn't have the greatest relations with China uh, due to both historical reasons uh, and also the fact that Vietnam is a member of ASEAN. Uh, and there's, there's a whole dy dynamic there. ASEAN, I should just mention, is the um, a, an organization of Southeast Asian nations. Um, so... In, in many regards, China you know, faces these diplomatic difficulties, one might put it, from all sorts of directions. And I go into these more in details in the report discussing each country as an individual case. Nick, you mentioned Taiwan. That seems to be a conflict that potentially could escalate and spill over into the rest of the region. Do you think that there is a risk of that? How are relations with Taiwan going at the moment? Very much so. Uh, I think Taiwan is a very unique case in the world of international relations. So just to give the, the viewers a brief introduction, China considers Taiwan to be a renegade province, which will one day be reunited with China 
and they have repeatedly said that they are very willing to use force if necessary. Uh, the reality is that Taiwan has been governing itself as a basically de facto independent state. Uh, it has diplomatic relations with a lot of the rest of the world, but these are mostly on a non-official basis as the PRC uh, does not permit that to be the case. Um, nonetheless, Taiwan is very much in the same vein as South Korea and Japan and a democracy in East Asia, a very liberal one at that. Uh, and it is a very close ally of the United States. And if you think about the fact that geographically, Taiwan is just a couple hundred kilometers off the coast of China's Fujian province, uh, and it's a US ally, this is a, a really major national security concern for China to allow Taiwan to continue having this nominal independence. So this is, of course, why we see a lot of moves from the Chinese side uh, trying to uh, annex Taiwan, uh, you know, either peacefully or through force. Um, and this is also a point that is totally non-negotiable. So for sure, Taiwan is a place which I think everyone should be keeping their eyes on um, when analyzing geopolitics of East Asia. And I go into this into quite some detail in the report. Right, Nick. Well, thanks very much. If you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to attend our webinar this Thursday, the 18th of March at one o'clock. If you're not yet a subscriber to the CRA, you can follow this link to join our 30 day free trial and you can register for the event that way. We'll also be releasing our China report, which Nicholas authored later this week. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.